Hi there, I have returned.、Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Art Block, but before we get started on that, I wanted to mention some stuff about the footage that you're going to be watching. I did indeed go out and do another plein air sketch. Well, I didn't go out exactly. In fact, this is a sketch done in my garden, <laughs> in the garden of the house I live in, where there's this cute little wall with some plants all around it.、Uh, well, you're gonna see. Uh, so I just kind of sat here and I drew this wall and window, and I thought they kind of served as like nice anchors to. Like, use as a frame basically to kind of help with some of the difficulties I was talking about in my last video about like the issues with planner sketching not really having a frame or anything like that. So, keep watching till the end to see that. And with、uh, here comes,、uh, I guess I'll just start talking about the topic of the video. Which one of these describes you as an artist? Option A I'm really consistent, I draw every day, and I never let a bad drawing get me down. Option B I try to draw as much as possible, but I often don't feel like drawing, so I just don't do it. Or, option C. I pretend to never get art block, and 90% of the time I have no problem drawing whatsoever, until I suddenly decide that I'm the worst artist to have ever existed, will never find success, and actually, I don't even remember how to draw anymore. Yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm definitely a C. <laughs> Okay, so there are definitely more than three ways to experience art block.、Uh, I'm sure many people will not fit into one of these categories, of course, but I'm willing to bet a good chunk of artists have experienced that kind of soul crushing self doubt that sometimes turns into an inability to work on your art. I think the reason this self doubt often feeds into art block, at least for me, is it makes it impossible to have fun while drawing. Drawing becomes not just a chore, but like actually kind of emotionally painful when it serves as a constant reminder of your anxiety about the future and how you feel like a complete imposter that is never going to make it. Your inner voice says, What? You're 24 and still don't have a strong grasp of all the fundamentals you're going to need for the future art jobs you want? Well, you'll probably be on your deathbed before you're actually a competent enough artist to impress an employer. Who do you think you're kidding with this I'm going to be a professional artist thing? And that's it. You have one bad art day. Combined at the perfect timing with your self worth being at its absolute lowest, and suddenly you can't draw anymore. You can't even try to draw. You think about picking up your sketchbook and you just feel dread. The longer this goes on, though, the worse you feel. Here comes that inner voice again. You thought it was bad when you were producing bad art? Well, the only thing worse than bad art is no art at all. You call yourself an artist? You realize that professional artists don't get to take time off just because they feel like it, right? If you can't even bring yourself to draw now, how on earth do you think you're going to handle a real art job? Besides, while you sit around doing nothing, your already mediocre art skills are evaporating into thin air. You don't have what it takes to be an artist. Well, I think that's enough of that. You get the picture. This is exactly what happened to me this past November, and pretty much has happened to me once a year since I decided to seriously pursue art in early 2018. And it sucks. It's a crappy feeling. <laughs> Most of the time, I love when I'm making art and I feel really good. Even if I'm making things that I don't really like and I know they're not good enough or to the standard that I want them to be, I still find motivation in the act of working on it. Like, every drawing or study I do feels like a teeny tiny baby step towards a goal. And sure, that goal may be a really long way away, but I don't have a rocket ship and walking is definitely gonna get me there faster than lying on the ground and hoping that it magically comes closer to me. I try not to compare my work to the work of others, and instead I compare my work to the work of my past self. This can be a really good method for staying motivated and keeping my eyes on my progress, instead of spending too much time focusing on negative comparisons like, why can't I be as good as blah? And I genuinely do think it can be a useful mindset to have for some things and some people. It's definitely not always the best way to be, or the best way for all people to feel, but most of the time it works fairly well for me. I think it's particularly good in my case for staving off art block as long as I can, because it keeps my mind focused on the positives and the progress I'm making. However, on the flip side, I think that avoiding comparing yourself to better artists in a constructive way can lead to slower progress, which then eventually, after a year of hard work, might send some people into a spiral of self doubt. Looking at other artists' work and thinking about why you like it more than your own art, i.e., what makes this art work so good, Is a great way to understand the things you want and need to learn to get where you want to be artistically. I don't have the answer for how to eliminate art block. I think I understand the ingredients that go into my own art block self doubt, 
dissatisfaction with the speed of my progress, anxiety about the future, as well as doing too much of the same thing without switching it up. Those might not be the same ingredients for everyone, and maybe there are some that are inside me that I haven't even detected yet. But I think identifying as many of these reasons for art block as possible is a good place to start with understanding why it's happening and how to stop it. For me, it's a balancing act. In order to feel good about myself and what I'm making, I cannot negatively compare myself to other artists. However, in order to feel happy with the progress I make, I must compare my work to other artists in a constructive way. This is not always easy when you have chronic feelings of low self-worth or experiencing a particularly negative mindset at that time. So perhaps if you are like me, it could be a good thing to deliberately compare yourself to other artists when you're already in a positive mindset? Question mark. Some people constantly look at other people's work and see it as an unending source of inspiration and goals to work towards. I admire that mindset and I love it when I feel it present in myself. And to be fair, I feel that way a lot of the time, but unfortunately I don't always feel that way. And then I hear well-intentioned artists say, if you don't feel inspired by other artists, you will never grow as an artist. <sighs> and that kind of compounds the issue. I mean, I do think that they're right. Being inspired by other artists is extremely important for progress, but it's important to know that just because you're not feeling up to it right now doesn't mean that you will never feel that way again or achieve what you want. Changing your mindset takes work and time, but honestly, I doubt that most people, if anyone, have a positive mindset 365 days a year. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. So for me, at least for now, the most positive thing I can do during those times is to say, I'm not in the right frame of mind right now to start comparing my work to others, but I will be again soon. So how did I pull myself out of this particularly bad bout of art block? Well, I didn't. <laughs> I waited for it to be over. I tried to enjoy the holidays as much as possible and I spent time with my family and just decided to take the pressure off myself to create artwork. And sure enough, after a few weeks of being kind to myself, I felt overwhelmed with the desire to create. If you really feel bad about not making any art for a while, try and make your art practice kind on yourself. Experiment with a fun new medium you've been dying to try or draw your guilty pleasure art or Try to find anything to do with creativity that feels exciting to you and makes you want to create. And you know, if all else fails, you can always refill your well of inspiration by watching a ton of gorgeous animated films, or if you're more of an aspiring game artist, why not play some of the games whose art inspires you? I have been feeling so creative ever since I decided to start using soft pastels, in part because they're a fun new medium I'm excited to get better at. They offer a kind of instant gratification because of being so quick to use. That's not only helping my sense of achievement, but also I believe helping me to improve my artwork by offering a quick turnover. Of course, digital art can offer a very high turnover rate, uh, quicker than pastels, but I feel that I got very burnt out on making digital art, <laughs> which kind of definitely contributed to my art block, like not having fun with the medium I was using. Now, I truly hope that what I'm saying isn't coming across like, take it easy on yourself, don't push yourself, you're gonna breeze through it anyway. No, of course not. Like, of course you should push yourself as an artist if you hope to grow. However, we all know that growth requires hard work and pain, but also rest and healing. So if you're having a really hard time, maybe it could be helpful to bring some of the fun and enjoyment back into your art, even if that means backing off a little, instead of feeling like you have to keep going down the exact same road, doing the exact same thing, pushing yourself to work harder and harder on a muscle that's already torn. I don't know. I'm no expert. These are just my thoughts. Even if you totally disagree with what I'm saying, I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. Whether it resonated with you or whether it just made you feel a lot more confident in your own ability to stave off art blog, like, in contrast to mine. <laughs> But if you have any thoughts, opinions on art block, or techniques that you find to work really well for you, I would absolutely love for you to leave a comment under this video. But that's all I have to say for right now, so I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day, week, month, uh, however long it is until I next post a video. <laughs> Maybe a year, who knows. Bye. Oh, quickly, before I go, uh, I just wanted you to stick around for a minute to check out the reveal of this piece, which, um, as I said, I was pretty happy with. 
so um yeah i just uh, wanted to show this at the end and i have a little bit of footage of me peeling off the tape so <laughs> i hope you enjoy that too and um I hope that this style of video was maybe kind of enjoyable because I actually scripted this kind of mostly instead of last time where I was kind of talking aimlessly I wanted to like be precise with what I was saying, more precise anyway and just yeah stay, stay more on topic so uh, I hope that was enjoyable for you and okay bye for real now <laughs>